have brought them to Calapia for its rural charm, beautiful weather, and magnificent ruins. The Calapians are a wonderful bunch. Royal party at the drop of a hat. Six heads, lots of hats. But they don't like to talk about the ruins. I never figured out why. Two facts which Yaz had placed in the drawer in her head marked, well, I hope that doesn't bite us in the ass. Calapia had turned out to be as advertised, rural, charming, beautiful and magnificent, but the Calapians were nowhere to be seen. As Yaz and her friends explored the buildings in one of the planet's major cities, Yaz had thought to herself that that mental drawer of hers had got opened a lot, that there wasn't actually a lot left in there, because most of the things that she'd suspected would bite her and her friends in the ass actually had. She'd been thinking that when Graham found the sign. This way to the shelters. Am I overreacting, or is that just a tiny bit worrying? Little did they know, this was what would lead to them ending up in a bare room, 100 feet underground, sitting in a circle with the names of famous people stuck to their foreheads. Alas, they made for the shelters. The Calapian who'd opened the door of the shelter when they knocked on it had been shocked to find there were still tourists who didn't know about the death moon that passed over the planet every 64 years. <laughs> They quickly ushered the doctor and her friends inside, and assigned them a room. They asked if they had any hats, and seemed pleasantly surprised when they said they hadn't. Hat storage alone, they said, was taking up a whole corridor down here. How long is it going to be? I mean, this is a moon, so that'll come and go in a night, yeah? The Calapian had looked awkward on all six of its faces. Then, it told them that they would be down here for three of their Earth weeks. There were only minutes before the passage would begin. They had no hope of getting back to the TARDIS. Brilliant. A word which had been completely at odds with the sort of words Yaz had been about to utter. It hadn't matched the look on the faces of Graham and Ryan either. Three weeks of indoor games. Result. It had become clear almost immediately that the Doctor, though she liked the idea of indoor games, didn't actually know the rules of many. She had in her pocket a chess set, and she could play that, except she insisted on making individual noises for each piece when she moved. She also had a travel set of a game she insisted was really called Scaribble, despite what it said on the box, because that was how they pronounced it on a planet the name of which she couldn't even pronounce herself. They tried to play that at first, but the doctor kept putting down letter tiles to form the names of places and beings she knows, or just to make a pattern on the board. Then she'd rearrange everyone else's tiles to suit that pattern, and after half a day of that, Graham had declared that he was going on strike. He went to find the facilities, and came back reporting that, to everyone's relief, things in that department were much like they were at home. So, what do you guys want to play? I've played that game with the names stuck on foreheads at parties when I was younger. If there's one thing I have in my pockets, it's pens. As well as a handy gadget that can manufacture something like paper, Except it decays into compost after a day, or if it doesn't, it becomes, you know, highly explosive. Which was how they'd come to all be sitting in that circle. From where she was, Yaz could see that the doctor had a note reading Louis Capaldi stuck on her forehead, Graham had Melon Sue, and Ryan had Theodoric the Great. Yaz, of course, had no idea what was stuck to her own forehead, though whatever it was clearly delighted Ryan and Graham, who'd come up with it between them. All right, so am I alive? You think you might not be? Is this person alive? Wait, when is this? I mean, when is now? Because we'll have to put down a rule to mean... Is this person alive in 2020? That's a terrible impersonation. What? Of him, on the piece of paper. You said nothing like him. Hey, see, look, it's a him. I don't know who I am. Bit soon for that. You've only been here one day. It ended up being one of the longest party games Yaz had ever taken part in. Or maybe it just felt that way. Following Ryan's painful discovery of the history of the late Roman Empire, with a bit of confusion about what the word goth meant in that context, Graham's correct guess about how he could be two people at once, and the Doctor's anecdotes about playing the triangle for this lovely Scottish lad and his dad, Yaz decided to make a serious attempt to deduce whose name she was wearing. Am I a woman? Yes. Yaz glanced over to see the doctor open and close her mouth as if deciding not to say something. Yaz wasn't sure she'd ever seen the doctor make that decision before. Okay, am I famous? Yeah, pretty much. But again, the doctor looked as if she had a problem with that, but didn't quite want to voice it. That was unique. 
Unique was where Answers lived. One of Yaz's criminology lecturers had said that. Who wasn't the Doctor sure about, to the point where she wasn't even willing to commit to them being a particular gender? Oh! I'm you! Ryan and Graham shouted in defeat, and the Doctor smiled an enormous smile, like sunshine through clouds. Shortly after, the Doctor fixed all their phones so they could follow stuff from home, and added lots of games to them too, though a lot of them didn't make much sense. The prospect of being shut up in here with her slowly changed from, as Ryan had put it in a whisper, like being stuck in a lift with a bee, to something a lot more relaxing. Yaz watched, fascinated, as the Doctor changed how she acted, almost every hour. Every now and then, the Doctor would take herself off for a brisk walk around the room with one of them when they needed to vent, or just needed the exercise. At one point, a small automated device arrived, carrying a basic meal of local fruit and what turned out to be a sort of bread. The Doctor used the sonic screwdriver to confirm they could eat it. While they talked about what they'd do when they got home, a frown appeared on the Doctor's face, as if just for a second they disappointed her. A little later that same day, Yaz joined the Doctor on one of her walks. She wanted to share what she'd observed. I thought you said you were socially awkward, because I'm not seeing that right now. I am. Often. But this is a task. I'm good at tasks. Thanks for noticing. Don't tell the others. I don't want them to start seeing me doing it. Or they'll get tired too. You made yourself annoying, so it'd feel relieved when you stopped. Oh. Yeah. I did that without even thinking about it. Relief that something's better than you thought it would be will get you through a day or so of awfulness. I learned that at Woodstock. Do you do that a lot? What? Go to 1970s hippie rock festivals? No, never again. The mud, the poetry, the nudity! Or was that the song? I mean, make yourself look smaller than you are. I suppose. I used to like it when people underestimated me, but in this body it's a bit rubbish because when I go, ah, I want people to stop underestimating me, but they just keep right on underestimating me. We don't do that though, none of us. I sometimes think if we could see all you were at once, it'd be too much. We couldn't deal. Well, I certainly can't deal with it. A bit much for me, still processing all that. I sometimes think that's why I changed my personality instead of just making my body younger. I need to switch myself off and on again, so I can handle all the memories, so a lot of it feels like it happened to someone else. I get a different perspective on what I've done. I've been thinking a lot about that lately. There's this girl in the mirror where I put her that doesn't suit who I am now. When we get out of here... Oh, this is getting deep and meaningful, isn't it? Yaz was about to say that was fine, but the doctor swung to include the others, suddenly pulling another surprise from her pockets. Balloon animal! Graham raised his hand, which was half a request and half an order for the doctor to stop. I've been thinking, Doc, about where that meal came from. I think we should go find some Calapians and, you know, say thanks. Yeah, if we could help out. And there, on the doctor's face, Yaz saw that enormous smile again. And so the days passed in balloon animals and yoga and karaoke, and also in learning all sorts of things about what Calapians like to do, as the Doctor and her friends cooked and distributed alongside them. On the last night of the passing of the Death Moon, everyone in the shelter came together and ate and were quiet, and all those heads lowered in remembrance of what had gone and those who'd been lost. The heads of the Doctor and her friends were lowered with them, Yaz felt by the end of it that she'd had a rest, physically and spiritually. Something had been proven to her in isolation. The doctor saw that look on her face as they waited for the big doors to open. In the midst of death, we are in life, together. Graham and Ryan grabbed each other and laughed. Yaz took a deep breath and the air was good. <laughs>